Good morning, and welcome to worship at Bread of Life Daphneton Church. My name is Michelle Lewis, and I'm the pastor here at Bread of Life. We are very glad that you have joined us today. Good morning. My name is Dorothy Sparks. I'm a deacon here at Bread of Life. Welcome. I'm David Evans, sign language interpreter. Before we begin worship, we have a couple of special prayer requests to announce for our community. Our interpreter, Wendy DeVore, has been interpreter with Bread of Life for a long time. Recently, her father died. We ask that you will pray for Wendy and her family. We also ask that you hold um, our interpreter, David Evans, in your prayers because his deaf mom died. He grew up right next door and learned sign from his deaf mom and she died. Just ask for prayers and comfort and support for David. We enter into worship amazed and awed that God continues to gather us. And we rejoice that the spirit of the Lord is upon us. The spirit of the Lord is in us. That spirit anoints us and sends us out. To bring the good news. What is the good news? Healing the brokenhearted. Freeing the captive. Comforting those who mourn. Providing a cloak of praise. Lifting the heavy spirit. Loosening the weight of grief and loss. The day of the Lord is coming. The day of the Lord has come. This is the fourth Sunday of our Advent season, a time when we wait and watch for God. And part of our Advent um, time is a song, a shared song. And so we'll have that next in worship. We light a candle for hope and a world that's longing for hope. We light a candle for hope and a world that's longing for
At this time, uh, as we've done in the last few weeks, I invite the children in our worship or the young at heart to come up close to your screens. If you have an advent calendar at home, you can get that out. Today, I'm going to open um, the window for the 18th of December. Um, because it fits really nicely with our worship service today. The 18th is right there. All right. Oh, I was wrong. It's not the 18th, it's the 21st. Whoops. <laughs> the 21st. Okay. December 21st, this verse, it says, And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. That verse comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, and it's two verses. It's verse 46 and 47. Mary had just gotten some very surprising news when she said that, and sometimes it happens for us, too. We get news that is unexpected and very surprising, 
and maybe sometimes you say, oh, I'm worried, I'm really afraid, I don't know what to do. But sometimes we say, thank you, God, thank you, thank you, thank you, and praise, praise, praise to God. Because God has a whole lot of surprises and unknowns in store for our lives. Sometimes that's really hard. Like when a friend gets sick or someone we love dies, that's really hard. But sometimes when life is full of unexpected things, it's really exciting and really fun. So this week, as you go out into the world and do everything you do during Christmas, I want you to look for those things that surprise you. And then you can say something like Mary, how Mary responded. My soul praises you, God. Okay, I want you to stay close to the screen because we're going to light the candles really soon. How do we embrace the mystery? We remember Mary, anxious and uncomfortable, walking toward love. We remember her words of gratitude and praise in the face of worry. How do we embrace the mystery? Mary encourages us to be open to God with thankfulness. Today, the fourth Sunday of Advent. God meets us in the mystery. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit Be with you always. And also with you. Prayer for the day. Lord, the young people around us offer prophecies that challenge and lead to our judgment. So we nod politely with clenched teeth and doubtful hearts. Lord, you invite us to dream new dreams.
but honestly, we prefer the familiarity of the past. Winds of visions swirl around us. So we close the windows and bolt the doors. Even on us, even here and now, your spirit will pour forth. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Our Bible reading today comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 56. During Elizabeth's sixth month of pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to a virgin girl who lived in Nazareth, a town in Galilee. She was engaged to marry a man named Joseph from the family of David. Her name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Greetings, the Lord is with you. You are very special to the Lord. But Mary was very confused about what the angel said. She wondered, what does this mean? The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary, because God is very pleased with you. Listen, you will become pregnant and have a baby boy. You will name him Jesus. This baby will be great. People will call him the Son of the Most High God. And the Lord God will make him king like his ancestor David. He will rule over the people of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary said to the angel, How will this happen? I am still a virgin. The angel said to Mary, The Holy Spirit will come to you, and the power of the Most High God will cover you. The baby will be holy and will be called the Son of God. And here's something else. Your relative Elizabeth is pregnant. She is very old, but she is going to have a son. Everyone thought she could not have a baby. But she has been pregnant now for six months. God can do anything. Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let this thing you have said happen to me. And then the angel went away. Mary got up and went quickly to a town in the hill country of Judea. She went into Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the unborn baby inside her jumped, and she was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she said to Mary, God has blessed you more than any other woman. And God has blessed the baby you will have. 
You are the mother of my Lord, and you have come to me. Why has something so good happened to me? When I heard your voice, the baby inside me jumped with joy. Great blessings are yours because you believed what the Lord said to you. You believed this would happen. Then Mary said, I praise the Lord with all my heart. I am very happy because God is my Savior. I am not important, but God has shown care for me, a lowly servant. From now until the end of time, people will remember how much God blessed me. Yes, the powerful one has done great things for me. God's name is very holy, always giving mercy to those who worship the Lord God. The Lord reached out an arm and showed power. God scattered those who are proud and think great things about themselves. The Lord brought down rulers from their thrones and raised up the humble. God filled the hungry with good things, but sent the rich away with nothing. God has helped Israel, the people chosen to serve the Lord. God did not forget the promise to give us mercy. The Lord has done what was promised to our ancestors, to Abraham, and their children forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then went home. For today's sermon, I want to talk about gifts around the Christmas tree. What do children do when they see gifts under the tree? Of course, they pick them up, they shake them, they might even peel the paper back to try and figure out what's inside. But what about adults? What do adults do? They might look at the gifts, figure out which tags are for them, probably not touch them because that's juvenile. Gifts are like mysteries. And so today I want us to focus on mystery. I'm going to show you a Christmas mystery box. Are you curious about what's inside? Christmas is mystery. Hmm. that up here so we can remember it during the sermon. So for example, 
We know that Mary is engaged to Joseph. Mary is only probably about 12 years old at this time. Mary is not a queen. She's not wealthy. She's not famous. Back in that time, the boys went to school, but girls did not. They stayed home, learned how to cook, took care of the house. And when I say house, I don't mean a fancy mansion. Her clothes were probably not designer. They were very humble. And yet, God chose her to become the mother of baby Jesus. And Mary was very surprised by this, very puzzled by this. It was a mystery. Why her? Another example, Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth are both elderly. They're past the age where they can have children. And yet, the angel informed Zechariah that his wife Elizabeth would have a son. Zechariah was puzzled by this because it was a mystery. I remember reading a book about a young woman, uh, an American, who decided to go to Uganda, which, in case you don't know, is in Africa. She was going on a missions trip. She went to visit people who lived on a literal dump, a place where trucks would literally back up and throw out the garbage in a huge pile. And these people were starving, and so they would pick through this pile and find food. And this was their home. They didn't have houses. And so I was telling a friend about this book. And the friend said to me, can you go to Uganda? I said, well, if I stayed there for a long time, that would be difficult. Because here in the United States, we have so much comfort. And living there wouldn't be easy. But as I continued reading that book, the more I read it, the more it impacted me. And I realized that before God created the world, Jesus was with God. And one day, God said to Jesus, I need you to go to the world and save those people. Now to Jesus, coming to the world, coming to the earth, was essentially like coming to a garbage dump because we were dirty with sin. Jesus was going to leave the majesty, the peace, the perfection the glory that is heaven, and come to our sinful and dirty world, and he did. And what did Jesus know? He knew that he would face pain, persecution, torment, rejection, that he would suffer, and that he would die. And still, he came here to us. I find it difficult to imagine Jesus leaving heaven and coming here for us. And when Jesus got here, he wasn't born in a fancy hospital. He was born in a barn. He wasn't born on a soft bed. He was born in a trough, a manger. He was not born to wealthy and famous parents. Mary and Joseph were just regular people. They lived in a small town. 
all of that is a mystery. So why did God make Christmas a mystery? God could have made Christmas really simple, easy to understand, clear, but God didn't. And what is a mystery exactly? It's something more than we expect, more than we can understand. Sort of like a present sitting under a Christmas tree. We don't know what's inside the box until we open it, and then it's no longer a mystery to us. So we have our Christmas mystery box here. I'd like to know what's inside, so let's open it. We have approval, and we have acceptance. Do approval and acceptance mean the same thing? They do not. When I came back from visiting Nigeria, flew back to the States and had to go through customs with my passport. They looked at my passport, they asked me some questions, and then they gave me approval to enter the country, to return home. Another example, when I was looking at buying a new car, I had to check out a number of cars before I finally approved which one I was going to buy. If somebody's interviewing for a job, the person who is evaluating their skills has to approve them before they get hired for that job. So those are examples of approval. Approval is like a stamp. It's a seal that says, this is okay. Is that what God does for us? Do we get a stamp of okayness, a seal of approval from God? We don't. That's not what God does. For example, Jesus knew that the earth was full of sin. Did that get his approval before he came to earth? It did not. Jesus accepted, which is different from approval. That's very different. Approval and acceptance are not the same thing. Let's take children, for example. They don't worry about their parents' approval because they know that they are accepted by their parents, and so they can relax and just enjoy that relationship. And that's how it is with us and God. God has already accepted each and every one of us. Maybe you have been waiting for God's approval. You don't need to, because God has already accepted you. And that's different from how it is here on earth, because we often worry about others' approval for us. If we're different, if we want to change something, we're worried that people aren't going to approve of us. And so oftentimes we 
do, say, and act in specific ways to get the approval of others. And oftentimes people worry about getting God's approval. But I'm here to tell you, we don't need that because God has already accepted us. I, for one, am really happy about that news. Because if we had to get God's approval, then it would take so much work and action and sweat in order to meet the standards. If you know Martin Luther, he was one who constantly worried about God's approval of him. He spent so much time on his knees, crawling before his creator, doing and saying what he thought he needed to do and say to get God's approval until one day, when reading the Bible, he realized that he had God's grace, which meant that God accepted him. He rejoiced. Now, how do we know that God accepts us? All we have to do is look at the Christmas story to realize that God accepts us. And the mystery becomes clear. Remember I said Christmas is a mystery, right? Changing Christmas is a mystery to Christmas is for you. Christmas is for me. The Christmas story isn't just something that we tell around this time of year because it's a beautiful story, but it's actually for us and demonstrates God's acceptance of us. It means that God accepts us, no matter what we've done, no matter where we've been, no matter who we've been, God accepts us forever. It's pretty amazing. So one final story. There was a man who had been in a fire and his face had become disfigured as a result of the fire. He didn't want anyone to see him, and so he ended up staying in his room and not coming out. And even when his wife would knock on the door, he wouldn't answer, he wouldn't open it. He didn't want anyone to see him. His wife knew that he felt somehow less than others because of his physical disfigurement. And so she went to see a doctor and she asked the doctor to perform surgery on her own face, which obviously confused the doctor, until she explained the situation that her husband's face had been disfigured and now was scarred, and he thought it was ugly, and so she wanted to have surgeries to disfigure her own face so that he would no longer feel so different and sad and low. And so the wife and the doctor went to their home, and ex they explained the situation to the husband through the door that the wife was going to have these surgeries so that she would look more like her husband. Upon hearing this, there was no response, but then slowly the door opened and the husband came out and embraced his wife. He realized that she was willing to do that for him so that he wouldn't feel so low. That's what Jesus did for us. He came here despite
despite our sinful natures, despite the fact that we're not perfect, he lowered himself to show us that like the wife who accepted her husband, Jesus accepts us. And that's why I say Christmas is for you and for me because Christmas shows that God accepts Prayers for the people. Advent God, you come to us in hope, love, joy, and peace. Thank you for the hope that includes others in faith. Thank you for love that sustains our lives even in uncertain times. Thank you for joy that illumines and inspires our lives. Thank you for peace that allows us to live in friendship with others. You come to us, God, and still we need to remember that things are not how they always have been. And this is not how it always will be. You come to us, God, and still we need to remember that your kingdom has come. It is growing among us now. And that the time will come when it fills the world with justice and love. You come to us, God, and still we need to remember that many people experience poverty, pain, trauma, and grief. These experiences make your kingdom feel like a faraway dream. Many people are dismayed by your followers. They long to see your love and justice expressed through your followers. And we followers often make mistakes and fail. Many people in your church long to be faithful and to make a positive difference. A positive difference in addition to caring for their children, their extended families, their students, their jobs, and many more responsibilities. You come to us, God, and still we hope. In Jesus' name we pray. May the peace of the Lord be with you.
we invite you to um, share the peace with others. Often in the last months, um, I've encouraged you to text or maybe send a card or write an email message. But you could also share the peace by praying for others. So in these minutes here, you can bring to your mind another person who needs peace and pray for that person to experience calm and peace. We have peace with God, and this is good news. And so it is our prayer that our lives and all of our resources, our talents, our skills, our interests, and our money, that we would use those gifts to share God with others just like Mary did. After the angel came to Mary with this surprising message, her response was to praise the Lord, to rejoice in what God does, and to think, oh, God remembered me, a humble servant. I think we have a similar response to realize that God accepts us, that God remembers us, that we are amazed and we celebrate the great things that God does for us. And in fact, God not only accepts us, but then God asks us to join with God and trusts us to do a particular thing. And here at Bread of Life, God asks us to share this good news that God accepts us, that God comes to us and loves us. Share that good news with the deaf community and the people who um, are connected to the deaf community. So we invite you to join us in this calling. Life is very different these days with the COVID pandemic, but we still have a mission. God still calls us to work. God still calls us to share this good news. We can continue in our mission, and we do. <laughs> and we need some financial help. So every week, we ask you to consider how you might join in, and we ask that you send some financial help every week. Because our money is like a symbol for us of how um, involved we are. So you can send a check to Bread of Life or you can use PayPal uh, to make a donation. And we ask you to do that at this time. An offering prayer. Lord, from one generation to another, you have shown mercy on those who honor you. You 
have stretched out your mighty arm. You scatter the conceited and confuse their schemes. You bring down tyrants. and lift up the lowly. You fill the hungry with good things, but send the rich away empty. You have kept your promises to us, you have come to our help. You will show your people your love forever. Our hearts praise you, O Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. is indeed our duty and our delight that we should everywhere and always give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of your Redeemer whom you will make all things new. In the day when he comes to judge the world, in righteousness, you will make all things new. And so, choirs of angels, the church on earth and the hosts of heaven together we praise your name and join your unending hope. We invite you to join the holy holy with us. This will not be void. Jesus last night he gathered with his friends and followers to whom he was betrayed. Our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, thank God, blessed it, and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take meat, this is my body given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, 
blessed it. Thank God who gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new agreement of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this. We invite you to join the Lord's Prayer. This will not be worth. to the table. Join Jesus in the feast. Come to the table. Join Jesus as he comes to us. Come to the table. Be fed with Jesus' words and Jesus' You all are invited to this table. For this table belongs to God. We are honored to share it with anyone who desires to feast. When you serve one another, use language something like this with the bread, this is the body of Christ given for you. And with the cup, this is the blood of Christ. And if you were by yourself, I will administer the bread and the cup to you. Body of Christ, given for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. God of grace and glory, you call us with your voice made visible in flame. You call us to be your people, faithful and courageous. Jesus embraced his mission in the waters of baptism. He went out to feed, heal, and comfort others. Lead us now from this gathering, fed and encouraged, to join in your transforming work, to feed, heal, and comfort others. We ask this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns now and forever. 
common. My friends, God gathers us together. And God sends us from this place. As you go today, receive this blessing. God is the creator, the savior, and our friend and counselor, giving grace, mercy, and peace. These gifts are with you now and forever. God, in your word, you promise that your servants will go in peace. You send us now. We have experienced your salvation. You have prepared us with everyone looking on. Your faith shines forth for all. Your glory is revealed even in faithful people. Thanks be to God.